Yeah, this morning we wanted to talk more about the five patterns. So we, we announced that the other day that we were going to go through the different five, the five patterns so that we could explain how they all interlock and interweave together. So the I guess the first question we want to ask is if there's one thing in your life that seems to go out of whack that affects everything else in your life, what would you say that is? If there's one thing that just kind of derails everything else, um, what is that one thing for you what would you say mark yeah i've i've been thinking about that yeah. <clears throat> well and i um it kind of goes to our next point uh, you know like i know really if i'm not getting a major aspect of any of the five patterns we'll talk about like it derails yeah. things um the one that i most readily give up is sleep but honestly like that probably is more due to like stress being a big thing right which i, I think is why this is an important topic to talk about right um right. and obviously there's so many different forms of stress but i'm talking about like that kind of um more of like the mental stress right like deadlines or things to worry about or or whatever it is like I, I find that when I let something really stress me out that kind of takes over everything else right like I typically don't right. sleep as well eating kind of gets substandard you know I'm like oh I don't have time to exercise right and right. so what would you what would you pick for me Oh, I, I'm curious because I would have picked stress for you. I would have said like when something stresses you out, it it sends you off the rails maybe more than than any of the others individually. Yeah, because it affects all the others for you like big time. You know that is a fascinating question. I mean, we know that you get terrible sleep, but yeah, that's you kind still of my manage step, to function. So. You still manage to function. So, <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. For me, I do know. I do know. Sometimes you just like forget to eat. So right. So for me, I would say my biggest. If I don't do it, it throws me off. Is just taking a time to like pause at some point in the day and think about the day. And I don't like. I'm not naturally good at that of like planning out my day. But I know when I do, it makes it more successful. Even if I don't look at all the calendar items. But it's like, what's the one thing that I want to accomplish today? If I don't stop and do that, I often don't really accomplish anything directed, right? I get caught in the thick of thin things. So mm -hmm. I kind of let the inertia of things take over. So sleep for Christy was a big one, um, which understandable. Like, yeah, I, I do think that if you don't manage the sleep, it kind of everything else falls to the back burner absolutely so you know i uh i talked about this on a call a couple weeks ago but the idea of like you know when we're trying to do something different when we're trying to make a change when we're trying to like work towards a goal um too often we focus on like what's different, right? What's going to be new this time? What's going to be better this time? You know, what maybe we've changed about ourselves. Um, but it can help to ask about like, what's the same, right? What are the same mistakes that I'm making now or that I'm likely to make? And so again, like that's for me with, with stress, like one of the mistakes, well, several of the mistakes I make, right? Like they all kind of <clears throat> combine together is, like, I don't get enough sleep, right? I end up staying up too late because I'm like, oh, I'm, I got to get all this stuff done or because I'm just worried about whatever's on my mind. I don't feel like exercising. Um, I just want to eat, like, food that has no nutri nutritional content. <laughs> um, I'm more likely to withdraw from social connections, right? I'm less likely to be grateful for what's going on. And so, like, if that isn't, like, you know, whatever I'm trying to do, um, you know, whether it's accomplishing a goal or moving forward or whatever, like 
if that just keeps happening again and again and again, and I don't make any change on it, like that's gonna, it's gonna just stop me over and over and over again. And there's different patterns like that in each of our lives. Right. And so like being able to recognize that <clears throat> has helped me intervene earlier. Like when I noticed myself getting in, in kind of that pattern. And so being, being able to identify what are those patterns are like for you can be really helpful. <coughs> like what are the triggers and then what are the things that tend to go? What are the things that tend to change <clears throat> and being, <coughs> excuse me, and, um, and being able to act on those triggers faster um, can help you keep from getting stuck in and getting totally derailed. And so now I know like, okay, I, I really don't feel like exercising, but I'm going to do something right. Like maybe it's just a few sets of push ups. Maybe it's, um, you know, a walk around the block or something like that. Um, right. Uh, well, so I think, I think you said something key there. It's getting rid of the pattern faster or the, the faulty pattern, the breakdown faster. It's not that that's not going to happen, right? Like, we just do that in life where, where things derail us a little bit. It's how quickly can we recognize and then get rid of that from being a problem. And the faster we can do that, the better. The, uh, you know, more we correct that over time and, and are able to eliminate that. So let's go back a little bit. We, we, let's recap what are the five patterns that we like to talk about. So th these are kind of things that we've deep thunk about and what are the five patterns in life that um if we can get them uh figured out somewhat uh that really affect our quality of life and how we do things in life so the five patterns are um we talk about the eating pattern the exercise pattern sleep pattern stress pattern and then the gratitude, whoa, gratitude and happiness pattern. Missed my finger. Um, so the gratitude and happiness pattern being, you know, kind of a mental health pattern, if you will. Um, and so those those five patterns, you know, you could call them some of them by different names, but we like to call them patterns. And instead of your diet, which really is just your eating pattern, like the the food you commonly choose to eat. Is your diet but we like to call it eating pattern because it emphasizes different things diet a has such a negative connotation uh, that of what we associate with diet and so calling it your eating pattern gets back to these are just the foods that you choose to eat and it's not good or bad but if are there things in that pattern that we could modify to help it be better for you um, that could help you accomplish your goal more readily exercise pattern as well instead of calling it working out or uh you know things that that may be associated with negative things it's like what's your pattern of how you move and maybe we've talked about that should we call it your movement pattern but that may have more connotation with how you like the quality of the movement versus just the frequency um but uh Anyway, with, with all the patterns, the reason why we call them patterns is because that's part of what we want to identify is tracking um, what are your patterns and what can you do to then modify those patterns to be healthier patterns. And so when Mark uh, is you know talking about how if something stresses him out, how it throws everything else off, it disrupts the healthy patterns and maybe uh, we can see patterns that that are disrupted then and so by tracking that when we feel like something's off and going through the pattern you know even writing it down and saying okay here's what i did monday tuesday wednesday thursday there are common things you can find on the pattern that it's like oh every time this happens in this pattern i subsequently am doing this in this pattern or this in this pattern it helps us be able to track down where this is coming from man, I've been getting crappy sleep the last few nights. Why have I been sleeping so bad? Oh, it's because I've been eating right before I go to bed. Why am I eating right before I go to bed? Oh, because I'm stressed out about this thing. So I don't want to go to bed. So I eat late at night. And, you know, so finding those patterns can really help us get to the root of what's the real problem here. We often have false attribution of the cause and effect, right? We often 
blame something that really isn't the problem. And so by by tracking down the patterns, it allows us to say, okay, this is the real root of this problem, and now we can deal with, with that. And so we like tracking those patterns because they really seem to be um, what's important. And so they all very much intermesh together. If I'm not, you know, as Mark was talking about, if you don't get quality sleep because of stress, then you're not going to feel as much like exercising or eating correctly or uh, correctly. Hey, uh, the, there's just so much emotion tied behind food choices. Not correct or incorrect, but eating the way that's going to fuel you best for what you're trying to do. Um, anyway, all of those things play in together. And then, you know, that gratitude and happiness pattern. If well, any of those things are off and it's making you not feel happy or grateful or fulfilled, um, then, then yeah, it kind of becomes this, what's the point of doing all of this stuff if I'm not? If it's not working for me, if it's not serving me. And so all those five patterns really do mesh together and play together. And so um, discovering what you can do to fix the real root cause of it by tracking it for a while and seeing, okay, where, where does this pattern really come from is so, so critical. And stress is, is such a key one. Uh, like Mark was mentioning, that seems to be one of the things that sets him off often and I would argue that it's it's probably more common for all of us even if we don't realize it that when we get stressed then our other choices fall out of pattern out of the pattern we want to use I guess and falls into the pattern that we kind of default back to so Mark you have a tool that you've used in the past for helping kind of identify stress Yes, indeed. So I, let me drop that in here real quick. I'll drop yeah. it in a couple of different forms. Let's see if this one will upload. And okay, so I just did this one in PDF form, but I will drop the images too, because sometimes that's a little bit easier to take a look at. So we'll do... Let's see if it does send. Okay, there we go. So, <laughs> there we go. Um, if you let me pull them up. so if you take a look at at, at these, right? So stress inventory. So these are kind of the different domains um, that that we feel the different areas that we feel stress in. So all when I go through some of the questions, when we look through the, those, I'll explain those a little bit better. But you can kind of look at this and say like, all right, in each of these areas. Like how, you know, how much stress do I have, right? Like, do I feel like I'm handling myself well in these areas or am I kind of at a tipping point? Um, am I doing things that are going to help me manage the stress in these areas or, or, am, I, or am I not? So right. there's a number of Are questions. you on target or not, right? I see this as like a bullseye. And yeah. Yeah. the closer you are to the target, the better, right? Yep, uh, yep. And, and so we've talked about before, right? Like there's things that move you, um, you know, you know, that, that, that kind of put you in more stress and things that can help to um, relieve some of that stress or drop it down. And so there's, you know, and you, you can obviously ask yourself more questions than these, but these are great primers to kind of uh, evaluate how you're doing in each of those areas. So in the physical area, right? Like, are, are you sleeping well? Are you getting enough exercise and activity? Um, right? Are you, are you like Cameron said, eating away that, that fuels you? Um, mental, right? Like, are you having problems remembering things? You know, is your, is your thinking clear? Do you have time? So Cameron mentioned one thing earlier, right? Like, if I don't stop and kind of consider, like, what's the one most important thing to get done in the day? Or what's the, what's the problem that needs to be solved? It's really easy to just move with inertia of the day and like never feel like you can fully focus. And so that's one of the things that, that I've noticed, right? Like if I'm having trouble making decisions, if I feel like my thinking is just cloudy um, or like I'm having trouble communicating kind of what I'm thinking and feeling, then like that's often a sign that, that like 
there's probably some some stress that I need to manage a little bit better because it's affecting my ability to, to think, to remember, to solve problems. Um, let's go on. So environmental one, that's a little bit different, um, but it's it can kind of be like, um, you know, is the like actual environment that I'm living in, right? Like is the house that I'm living in in a safe area? Do I have access to clean food and water? But also like, are there um, influences or individuals around that like help me to feel safe, help me to feel positive, or are there you know individuals or environments that that make it less able to feel that way? And so yeah. it's not that we're like <laughs> cutting people out of our life, right? Like let's just go take a <laughs> cancel all these people in my life. Um, but it's just considering like where am I spending most of my time and with whom am I spending most of my time? And is that like, you know, a net positive or net negative? And what can I do if, if that's kind of trending towards a negative to modify that environment and to, to help me feel safer, more confident, more, more able to um, feel confident in my ability to, to live the type of life that I want. Right. Uh, and so it may not be about cutting people out, but it may be setting right. boundaries. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a great way to say that is, is like, you know, yeah, set boundaries and make sure that like, are you doing things that are in line with your values or are you um, taking someone else's values or, or, you know, making other people's priorities always your own because of, you know, like that's the way you've always done it. And so again, being intentional, thinking about it and, and yeah, setting, setting boundaries. I like that. Um, the next is social. So I feel like this one is, is hugely important. And that's when I know, I, I mean, <laughs> probably one that's important for all of us and more important than we recognize is, is like taking time to connect with others, um, you know, building a strong support system. And it's not always, you know, that's not always super easy, right? Like, I, I feel like when you're in high school or college, like it's so easy to make friends, right? You're like, oh, let's do something this weekend. And, and as you grow into adulthood, like just making solid friendships can, I don't know if it gets harder, but it just seems harder. It just takes more energy. Um, but having meaningful relationships, having meaningful friendships, um, having people to be able to reach out to you when, I mean, in all times, honestly, but especially when, you know, uh, tough things happen in your life. Um, it can be really easy to withdraw when stress is high but making time for, for social connection, social relationships can just make everything else work better. Um, and so just, again, different questions you can ask yourself, um, see how you're doing in that area. And then yeah, two more. Nope, nope, that's it. <laughs> Did I go through all of them? Oh, no, 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 no. I need to change the last one. I copied it. So, um, social and environmental. Yep, I need to, I need to, I forgot to update that part. So it should be emotional. And then existential. So emotional. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 so I don't know if not the right questions. I'll, I'll blow the corrected one. But again, like, um, like, how am I, like, how am I managing emotions? Like, do I need to talk someone, talk to someone? So I'm like, very open with this. Like, I see uh, like a mental health counselor once a month. It helps me just kind of talk through anything that's been going on. Like, give me tools to help me like better um, handle and navigate, you know, stressful things and to just, you know, make sure I'm on board, help me with my thinking. Um, I'm a huge proponent of, of mental and, and emotional health. Um, and so you can also ask yourself things like, are there, um, you know, are, what are the triggers that kind of set me off, right? That make me um, angry, that make me sad, that make me um, feel poorly about, about myself. Um, you know, do I feel like I have a, a helpful way of coping with tough emotions? Um, how do I do it expressing those? How am I expressing my needs to other people? So questions like that to ask yourself. Like I said, I'll, I'll upload that last part. Um, I guess I was just really excited about the social. Have friends. <laughs> um, and then the last one there, existential. So that, you know, uh, can mean different things to, to different people. But the real, like, the, the real big thing is, like, do you feel a, a sense of meaning and purpose in your life, right? Do you feel connected to um, things and people outside of just yourself? 
Um, do you spend time in places that bring you joy, right? So for some of that, it's, for some people, it's nature. For um, other people, it's being connected to a religious community. Um, like it can be different for, for other people, but like, do you just, do you feel like you have a mission and a purpose? Um, something that, that, um, kind of brings meaning to your life. And so being able to go through each of those and, um, and kind of, yeah, do an inventory of how am I doing in each of those areas? Um, are there ways that I can prove, you know, are there people that I can reach out to for help, right? Again, it can be, you know, friends, family, neighbors, like different professionals, right? Like maybe, um, maybe it's time to go see the dentist. That one's for Cameron. <laughs> um, but, you know, like maybe, maybe making an appointment with like a mental health provider or like maybe it's been a while since you've gotten like your health checked up. Like maybe it's time to do something like that or, um, you know, whatever like things or people. Um, you need to involve to, to help you get balance in those areas and and enable you to manage your stress in those areas. I think too often we, you, you know, like having this framework really helps um, to be able to kind of like hone in and identify. I know in the past, like, I would just be like, well, I'm stressed because I'm stressed because I'm stressed, right? Um, not being able to really clearly identify like, where I was stressed, why I was stressed. And so just having a framework like this, it doesn't have to be this exact framework, but having something like this where you can kind of uh, just like ask questions of each area of your life and then be like, oh yeah, wow. Like, yeah, the physical physical part of that, I think you're like, I haven't been sleeping well, I haven't been eating well. Or like, oh man, like, yeah, I just haven't made time for like connecting with others. Like it's been a long time since I've hung out with my friends. Like I come home and I'm just so exhausted that I, I eat something and then I just watch Netflix and I go to sleep, right? Um, so being able to like clearly identify which area of my life is this going on in, what areas of my life, other what other areas of my life is this affecting, and how can I intervene to um, kind of bring down the stress and and help me to manage things better? Yeah. Oh, well, I think that that really is kind of the point of everything, right? That we. Um, just have some kind of tool, some kind of framework or way of reviewing these things in our life so that we can identify the patterns. Because you can't fix what you don't know. Um, and so if you don't know what the problem is, you can't fix it. So that's part of what we want to do within the program and how we want to help people just in general in life is, is being able to say, okay, this is where you're at. Here are your patterns. What are things that we can fix? So once you identify one of those things, as you ask yourself those questions, it gives you the opportunity to then say, okay, what's that 1% change that I can make then in that area? Again, we can't make the goal too big. It's like, well, I don't really have any friends that I care to hang out with. Well, and the goal can't be like, I'm going to have 10 friends by the end of the week, right? Like that may be a bigger bite than we can you off but it may be something like okay one percent change i'm going to introduce myself to more people or i can i can call old friends and try to rekindle some of those relationships or i can you know reach out to people in a in some meaningful way but it's not like a major life shift that's gonna cause a bunch of stress and anxiety but just a small like i can do this right now and that that can give me some more social um, you know, I'm going to call one old friend a week and just hop on the phone with them and see what they're up to and, and stuff like that. You know, it, it, it's identifying where the gap is so that then you can start to find some subtle way to start fulfilling that or filling that gap and find the fulfillment in that that uh, really helps start making some of those changes. And so whatever it is that's stressing you out. Um, there's a way to kind of identify and then start working on that. Rarely with stressors is there a solution that's quick and simple. Um, often they are things of, of changing up those patterns over time. And I would say that's true of any of the patterns, that it's not like, oh, all you need to do is cut out, 
whatever out of your diet. It doesn't work that way because there's reasons why you eat that, why you feel compelled to eat that, or um, why that's uh, a food trigger or things like that. So it's not about like, oh, you just change that then. It's more about, um, okay, I identify that as, as part of the problem. What are the steps then that I need to take to start modifying that habit or that behavior? Because it's not easy to change. Um, it takes time. It takes practice and it takes the awareness of what it is we actually need to change. It's not just about doing better because we, you know, I just need to be better at that phrase is really pretty toxic often and, mm-hmm. and tears us down and makes us think that we're bad versus, yeah, right now I'm working on this, right? Makes us feel like we're capable and we have the hope that we can work on it and improve it. And so that's, that's what we need to focus on is what we're working on and not what we're bad at. And, and as we do that in these stress areas, um, it can really help us to be more grounded and, and manage our stress better and be in control of our stress versus letting it spiral out of control. And then we can have success not only in that area, but it will hopefully derail the other areas of our, of our five patterns less. So hopefully that was helpful going through that. Um, uh, we'll definitely that it's posted there, but uh we can we can share that too and make sure that everybody's got that uh that tool to be able to do that self assessment um yeah i i guess that's that's what we had to say about that um mark <laughs> any final any final things yeah so the last thing i would say is the nice thing is that like when we make those little 1% changes the like the sum of those together is like more than their individual parts and so they create an upward spiral all together right so like maybe you know it's not this overhaul but maybe i call like i said one new friend a week and maybe i start taking a walk around the block and maybe i um add you know, an extra fruit to like my regular meal or something like that, right? Those are all pretty small changes. They're all pretty easy to implement, but all of those combined together to help us manage stress better, to feel better. And so that's the nice thing is when we, when we make um, any of those changes, it can help improve how we're feeling in all of those areas, but a change in kind of any of those areas will like, they all work together and, and like, like we said, and um, help us build those positive patterns that keep us feeling good, um, that help us live our values and that help us make decisions in line with, with what we really care about. Yeah. Truth. So yeah, that's, that's the idea. If we can, if we can build those healthy patterns, um, over time and just slowly 1% at a time, but you make 10, 1% changes and the 10% change is a big deal, but you make one 10% change, and it's really uncomfortable. And so let's change the little things, one thing at a time, and uh, it'll add up. It's the fact that you're headed in the right direction that matters. All right, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on the next call tomorrow evening um, at 5.30. Thanks, we'll see you then.